Me a bagatelle. What's a bagatelle? Bagatelle? Oh, bagatelle is a bagatelle. Look how dark it's getting outside. Whew, I wonder what time it is. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Oh, five minutes after six. Hm. Five minutes after six? Yeah, must be time for dinner. I hope Mother has something good tonight for a change. <laughs> That's a little before your time, Susan. Where'd you get it, Daddy? Oh, that's a long, long story. Nope, the telephone. Telephone. Hello? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello? Pierce to one trip, Plummer speaking. Oh, Rose. Oh, what's the matter, Rose? What's wrong? Our little girl. She's gone. Susan's been kidnapped. What? Kidnapped? Susan? Oh, that's. Susan! Oh, no, no, now, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. She went out for a walk a half hour ago with a dog, and she hasn't come back yet. I've looked all up and down the street, and she's nowhere to be found. I told her to come right back. Oh, what are we going to do? Now, now, stop worrying. Stop worrying, Rose. Stop worrying? About my own little baby? How can you say such things? You have no heart. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It wasn't my fault, George. I've only got two eyes. I can't watch everything. <laughs> what? Yeah, she's right here in the shop with me, safe and sound, yes. Well, why didn't you say so? That's a fine thing, keeping me on pins and needles like this. Well, thank goodness she's safe. Give her a kiss for me. And ask her who told her to go down there anyway without telling me. Give her a slap, a big one. She's got to be disciplined. Well, that child will be the death of me. Mother, mother, how do I look? Turn around. Lovely, dear, lovely. You're just a picture. Sure, she ought to be hung. I suppose you think that's funny. Rufus? Yeah, I know. Don't leave that plane lying around. Laura, dear, I'm so excited about meeting him. Well, he won't be here for a few minutes. Well, I'd better finish my practicing. That's a good girl. <laughs> was the mating call of the saber-toothed tiger, as reconstructed by science's latest investigations. These savage... Well, thank goodness we don't have to put up with awful noises like that nowadays. What do you call that singing of yours? What? Well, if you don't appreciate art... If that's art, I'll stick to science. Oh. Oh, you're 
No matter what you Mother! Mother! All right, all right. All right. Roam the earth. Are you two quarreling again? Oh, Mother, why is it that every time I start don't practicing... Don't you. It'll give you wrinkles. Oh, Mother, it's a homey food science talk. I don't care what it is. You've got to show your sister more respect. Why? Why? Well, anyway, it'd do her good to listen to it now that this Professor Wainer's coming to take her out. Then she'd have something to talk to him about. He isn't a professor yet. He's too young. Mr. Wainer and Laura will have more interesting things to talk about than science. Oh. Oh, if only this place were a little bit nicer. Well, maybe he won't notice us. Oh, it'll be all right. Mother, anyway, he's a little nearsighted. Rufus, Rufus, pick up this newspaper. And, uh, and that airplane. Okay, okay. It's hard enough trying to make this place look like something without... Turn on that lamp, dear. Oh, that ceiling. It's a disgrace. Rufus, why do you always have to eat just before dinner? Because that's when I'm hungry. Oh, there he is now. Oh, hurry. Oh, Rufus, go on, get out of here. Wait, go on. Mother, don't argue. Give me that. Oh, not that. Throw it away. Mother said throw it away. your father. Oh. That's what I was trying to tell you. I know the sound of that old tub a mile off. And he's parked right in front of our house again. Oh, Mother, don't let him. George. What? That jalopy. What's the matter with it? Move it away from the front of the house. All right, all right. Hey. Huh? Oh, all right. You see? Huh? I'll go back. All right, all right, all right. Mother, can't you make him stop? Rufus, go and wash for dinner and don't come down until I call you. Hey, Mom. What is it now? Merely reporting a case of spontaneous combustion in the kitchen. What? I don't hear anything. No, but can't you smell it? Goodness, my dinner. It's a good thing I ate that apple. I mean, Harold, well, this is so unexpected. You, you've really taken my breath away. I, I've known you such a short time. Well, of course, you'll have to ask Daddy. Oh, but don't be afraid. Daddy's sweet. I'm sure he'll give his consent. Oh, I'm so glad, dear. I don't believe in long engagements either. What? Oh, well, well of course you can kiss me. Oh, Harold, but not here. Not in front of all these people. Later. Oh, Harold, I guess you've just made me the happiest girl and all. Hello, Daddy. Hello. How are you? I feel fine. The Harold looks a little pale. <laughs> oh, Daddy, stop it. Where's my newspaper? Newspaper? Yeah, you know that uh, with the big words on top and the small words below that's all wrapped up? You know? Oh, it's in the trash basket. In the trash basket? Oh, it's fine. Tomorrow, just throw it in the garbage pail. It'll be all right. Laura. 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 What? If I'm not too inquisitive, how long does that have to keep up? An hour every day, Daddy. I still owe myself ten minutes. Right. Laura, can't we declare a moratorium? All right, skip it. Let it go. George, please. Huh? You 
wants her to smoke that awful cigar. Hey, what's going on in this house, anyway? It's, it's Harold Wainer, you know. That new instructor at the Institute Laura met last week. Yes. He's coming to take her out and Oh, says... yes, uh, well, he's already proposed and been accepted. What are you talking about? Oh, let it go. You don't want to admit. Forget it, will you? Forget it, forget it. It was just a dream. Maybe. So what about dinner? Is dinner ready? Yes, but, uh... Yes, but I know. Yeah. Well, Sammy isn't here on time. But listen, tell him his father, the man who brings in the groceries, he's here on time. Well, it's not just Sammy, but, uh... It wouldn't look nice if Mr. Wainer came in while we were at the table. Oh, did Mr. Wainer never see anybody eat before? Come on, let's sit down and eat. Yeah, I know it's silly, but I'm hungry to eat a goat, so come on, let's sit down. Susan, Rufus, dinner. Mm. Mm. Your sister don't feel well. Doesn't. Better. Shut up. <coughs> Rufus, put that book away. Oh, Mom, Dad's reading. George. A fine example you set the boy. Put that newspaper down. He's here. George, turn your chair around. Sit up, Susan. Great lover. <laughs> Oh, it's you. I forgot my key. Hello, Mom. Sammy, you're late again. Boy, what a day. Hi, folks. Hello, mm -hmm. Susie. Susan, to you, Samuel. Hmm. Well, how about a little food and a kind word? Here's some soup, dear. Yeah, and here's a kind word. Don't eat it. Shut up. Don't talk the way about your mother's soup. Don't eat it. Put that back in the river, will you? Woo! Well, hold on to your chairs, everybody. Have I got news for you. Sammy, you got that job at the shoe store. No. This is a real proposition. That big break we've been waiting for. It's the electrical fly sweater again. Oh, okay. If you want to throw a wet blanket on it, it's a confidential tip anyway. Go ahead, Sammy. I'll listen. Well, it's only the greatest idea I ever hit on. Oh, Substantial, oh. solid, the good earth. A terrific real estate deal. Oh, Look, Dad, it'll only take a little cash to swing the deal, and if I act fast, I can get in on the ground floor. Well, stay on the ground floor. You wouldn't have so far to jump. Gosh, Dad, I'm not just thinking of myself. No. It's all of us, this whole family. We could all be on Easy Street if you'd only listen to me. We could all be on relief, too. George, I think it's just plain cruel to discourage the boy that way. Oh, who's cruel? Why did he go and get a job like other boys? <laughs> Me, cruel. I wouldn't harm a fly. That was a mosquito. <laughs> For heaven's sakes, Laura, if you're going to eat, why don't you sit down? Yeah. I'm going out to dinner. Harold Wainer's taking her. Oh. Who'd you say, Wainer? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's funny. I just saw him in his car at the gas station. He told me he was going to the dean's house for dinner. What? Yeah, all got enough in his soup and fish. When was this? Oh, about 20 minutes ago. But you must be mistaken. But I just talked to him, I tell you. He didn't say a word about coming here. Just started his engine and took off up the Hampton Road. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> it's too bad. It's too bad. I can't understand it. He seemed like a pretty decent guy to me. Yeah. It's your fault, George Pierce. This whole awful thing. My fault? Every bit of it. They're off. Shut up, you. Oh, can I help it if she has six boyfriends in as many months and none of them take? Why do you suppose none of them take? How do I know? Because you've never given the girl a proper chance. Nor any of your family. Oh, Ma, come on. Let's get on with the dinner. Look at this house we have to live in. What's the matter with this house? Can Laura entertain like the other girls in this town? Why not? No, she'd be too embarrassed. Why, we haven't had a new stick of furniture since before Rufus was born. And that awful old sofa with a hole in the middle of it. it don't look so bad to me. Doesn't. Doesn't. Shut up, will you? Doesn't. Why, it's ready for the museum. Yeah, so am I. What, do you think I'm a millionaire? <laughs> Nobody would ever make that mistake. How many times have I told you about those cracks in that living room ceiling? But would you do anything about it? Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that car we have to drive around in. Well, it goes, don't it? Doesn't. Oh, keep quiet. Doesn't it? Listen, Mom. How about some food? Oh, that's a good idea. A little food. Yeah. Have a little food. Oh, what's the use? Sam, you don't think there's anything in what your mother said, do you? Oh, she was just excited, I guess. It's all right. Yeah, you know about me not treating my children right and being cruel. You know that. Oh, uh, what was this proposition you had? It's terrific, Dad. Listen yeah. to this. 
The electric railway is going to be extended all the way up to Hampton. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. That property along the right of way is bound to skyrocket. Yes, now, if we act fast before wait the news... Wait, 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 wait. You said you needed some money. How much How much do you need? Only 5,000 bucks. Only 5,000. 5,000 5, bucks? What's the matter? Are you crazy? Where do you think we're going to get the money? Well, you and Mom got those bonds sitting around doing nothing. Now, stop right there. Those bonds, huh? You want me to give you those bonds? Of all the nerve. Well, you must be crazy. But, Dad, listen. Forget it. Forget about the whole thing. Forget about it. That's right, Lori. Don't cry anymore. Well, anyway, I still have my career. But he was so nice. Ah, oh, here comes the food. Ah. Oh, uh, uh. Susan? Ah, oh, yeah. What is this? Well, uh, my stew burned, so I... Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. It's very healthy, dear. Mm. Dr. Munson recommended it on the radio. What's in it? Uh, eggplant, for cottage cheese, and chopped lima beans. What is the plot? You're trying to blow us up? Oh, don't be silly, George. Eat it. It's good for the metabolism. The what? Listen, I'm a plumber. Metabolism. Dr. Munson says so. Well, well the only ism I know is good old Americanism. Good old ham and eggs. Mm. That's the trouble with you, George Pierce. You're behind the times. Yeah. Dr. Munson's recipes are famous. Yes, but Dr. Munson don't have to eat them. Doesn't. Oh, shut up. Don't you strike my son. Rufus, put that book away. Ah, oh, but, Mom, I... I can't stand it. Is everyone in this house crazy? You too. My own son turns against me. I'm hungry. I thought you cared about me. Where are you going? I'm going to the drugstore for a ham sandwich. What? Well, maybe ham and cheese. <laughs> Pierce, the one's your plumber. <laughs> Shut up, Mom. Oh, oh. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Pierce. I just wanted to talk to you oh, about... Oh, listen, the... don't bother me. I don't want to buy any tickets for any picnics or anything else. I That's don't... okay, Pierce. This ticket comes to you with the compliments of the department. Oh, thank you very much. It's very... Hey, what is this? What did I... I didn't do anything. What did I do? Jane Hughes wears too much lipstick. Have you any money, dear? They seem to be all out of change. Yeah, I think so. Here's ten cents. Still eighteen cents sure. How silly. Well, it's only a few blocks away. We could walk from the Yeah, boy. There's Sammy. Well, that's lucky. Just a moment, please. Uh, Sammy. Oh, hello, Mother. I want to know. This is Bill Tevitz. I used to know him in college. Oh, of course. How do you do? How do you do? Tommy was telling me last night how he'd run into you. Uh, this is my uh, daughter, Laura. How do, how do you do? do? So uh, you've come to our little town to build a big new railway. I told you that was confidential, Mother. Oh, that's all right. It won't be a secret much longer. Uh, are you staying here at the Hansford? Well, only for a couple of days. You see, I have an aunt in town who's offered to put me up, brave old girl. An aunt? Tevis? I don't recall. My mother's sister, Mrs. Stewart. Oh, uh, Clara Stewart? Yes. You mean that big white house just across the bridge? That's right. Uh, well, <laughs> Laura and I were just out doing a little shopping. Well, Bill's got to get a few things, and uh, I'm going to show him around. Oh, really? I figured that with Sammy as guide, I wouldn't go wrong. Well, that's very funny. I'm afraid you're flattering Sammy, Mr. Tevis. You see, uh, he never buys anything for himself unless Laura goes along with him. She has the loveliest taste. Oh, Mother. Oh, don't be so modest, dear. Perhaps if you're free, you'll be able to help Mr. Tevis out. Well, I... Well, I hardly think it's necessary. Oh, I'm Pierce. sure she'll be able to manage. Won't you, dear? Well, yes, yes. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> well, splendid. I I'd love to have you come with us. Uh, my car's just outside. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't think I'd be able to spare both my little ones. You see, uh, I'll be needing Sammy to drive me home. Well, uh, you better take those packages from your sister, dear. <laughs> yeah, all right. Goodbye, sweet. Good luck with your shopping, Mr. Tevis. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Pierce. <laughs> 
Oh, hello, Nora. Mom, sometimes you're positively sensational. What a nice young man. Sure. And he seemed to like Laura, too. He didn't have much choice in the matter. Sammy? Anyway, what's the use of kidding yourself? Why should a fellow like that go for a girl who hasn't got a nickel? And she'll have something someday. You mean those bonds? <laughs> Buttons. Well, of course it isn't very much, but... It could I'm... be a lot more. Plenty. And just like that, too. Tempest just told me the railroad's going to build a substation between here and Hampton. Right near that site I had in mind. Why, the proposition's even better than I thought. You know, that land's going to be worth a fortune. No, I couldn't do it. Huh? Oh, um, uh, your father and I promised each other we would never use those bonds except in a family emergency. Yeah, I know. Now, uh, now come along, dear. I've got to cash a check in the bank. Oh, goodness, I almost forgot. Have you 18 cents? Well, just about. Here, my right-hand pocket. All right. Hey, sit down there. Yeah. Isn't that Bill Tevis' aunt? Oh, yeah. Get what you wanted, Mrs. Stewart? I generally do, don't I? I want these bonds turned into cash at once. I knew it. It all ties in. She's one of the biggest real estate owners in these parts, right? She's probably the only person in town besides me who's got advance information on the railway deal. Well? Well, she's going to cash in on it. She's no fool. <laughs> How can you tell, Sammy? Don't jump at conclusions. Okay, okay. What's the difference? The rich get rich and the poor get poorer. Hiya, Miss Taylor. Well, well, $10,000. That's a tidy sum. Another little land deal, Mrs. Stewart? <laughs> you don't change much, Bill Johnson. Same old busybody, aren't you? Now hurry. What'd I tell you? Next. How do you do, Miss Pierce? How do you do? Sammy, do you really think that... What? Three, four, five. There you are. I'm gonna do it. Huh? Your father must never know, Sammy. Afterwards, we can tell him, of course. Gosh, I, I don't know what to say, Mom. Well, aren't you happy? Sure, sure, but... Well, well you don't think there's any risk, do you? Well, it, it isn't that, Mom, but, well, I, I want you to be sure you're doing the right thing. I believe in you, dear. I want to give you your chance and Laura hers. Oh, gee whiz, Mom, you're swell. <laughs> What'd I do with it? My money, the five dollars. Take it easy, Mom. I'll get it. You get the bonds. <laughs> Oh, hi, Mrs. Taylor. Um, do you always have someone along when you shop, Mrs. Tevis? I mean, uh, oh, that's a lovely tie. Did someone help you pick that? No, I managed that one myself. Well, what am I going to help you buy? Well, now, don't tell me. Now, let me guess. Uh, handkerchiefs, I'll bet. And, uh, socks. Oh, those cute little ones you wear without the garters. No, I figured I'd like to get some good tobacco and a couple of golf clubs. Golf clubs? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I don't know much about those, of course. It doesn't really matter, does it? Rule five. The uh, feet should be firmly planted on the ground, the body erect, and the elbows close to the side. Rule one, you must keep quiet when anybody's making a shot. But you'll never make a shot like that, Dad. No. Take an easy stand. Yeah. And kind of loosen up a little bit like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You look good at a grass skirt. <laughs> Try <laughs> it, Dad. It'll help you relax. Oh, yes. Try it. Woo! Oh, that tickles. <laughs> the ball should be opposite the left heel and about uh, 24 inches forward. All right, get me a tape measure. I'll measure it. You're swinging too fast. Oh. That's not far enough. That's too far. Oh, why don't someone let me play this game my own way? That's why. Huh? You might listen to Rufus, George. After all, he has been a caddy, you know. Yeah. Try again, Dad. Yeah. I want a ball. Well, no wonder. It says here, you've got to uh, oh, pull the listen, club with here, a... Oh, listen, here. You take the stick. You know more about the game than anybody else. Quitter, huh? Yes, a quitter. I quit this game 15 years ago. Now I know the reason why it's silly. George, come back here. I've taken a lot of trouble to get us that invitation to the golf club, and you're not going to let me down. Well, you've got to get somebody else to push the pill around with that young Tevis. You're Laura's father, aren't you? Well, you're asking me? Well, we've got to do something about entertaining him. What about Sammy? Sammy? Oh, uh, oh, Sammy's busy. Sammy's busy? 
Now, now, don't try to change the subject, dear. Here, now take that and try again, please. Go on, dear. And we'll all keep quiet. All right, you keep quiet. Again, Pop. Hello, Daddy. Oh, hello. Sit down here and join the rest of the gallery. What are you doing, Daddy? I'm sporting a perfectly good Saturday afternoon. Well, then why don't you stop? Yeah, it's a very good idea. Susan, dear, you want to say here, honey, you have to be quiet. Why? Rule nine. Nice baby. Woo! Open space. Wonderful well. place. Well, here we are. Yeah, here we are. It's a lovely day, isn't it? But the weatherman says it's going to rain. I hope it does. Hope it don't. Don't. Doesn't. Shut up, will you? Doesn't. Which club, Mr. Tevis? I uh, take my driver, Rufus. Which club, Pop? Oh, I don't care. Any club at all. This is all right. His father's pretty sure of himself, what? He never would stick to the rules. Mr. Pierce. Yeah? What do you say we play for a small stake? You mean with onions? <laughs> <laughs> say for a dollar a hole? Dollar a hole? Now, George, there you go again, always trying to raise the stakes. <laughs> He's such a terrible gambler. Who, me? You can't deny it, dear. Well, I'll leave it up to you, Mr. Pierce, but uh, no more than five dollars. Five dollars? Now, George, I simply won't hear of you playing for more. Hmm? All right, five dollars it is. Yes, but there's... Don't argue, dear. It's all settled. I'll say it's all settled. <laughs> hello, Laura. Oh, hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Bob. Hello, Mrs. Pierce. I didn't know your dad played. Oh, didn't you know dad played? Mr. Pierce only plays when he can find a worthwhile partner. Uh -huh. I'm Jane Hughes. Phil Tevis, how do you do? Charmed, I'm sure. Mother. I guess you go first, Bill. Excuse me. Ball, Rufus. I used to play this game years ago. They used to call it shinny. Same game. Oh, George, keep quiet. All right. Oh, what a perfectly lovely shot. Thank you. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, that was a lovely shot. Thank you. Woo! That was a $5 shot. Well, I hope I'll see you again, Mr. Tevis. I hope so, too. You go now, George. Oh, all right. Here you go, Pop. All right, I'm going to play this ball over here. Here. Oh, here. come on now. Yeah, oh, all right. Hit it. I'll hit it. I'll hit it. Don't be afraid. Relax, dear. Huh? Oh, wait a minute. I can't relax swinging a club with my hand. Time to rain. If it does, remind me to thank the weatherman, will you? you on the porch. Righto. Oh, uh, Bob, don't you think you better get the car? Good idea. Oh, uh, oh, it's you, Mr. Tevis. Oh, hello. I see you remember my name. Well, it's an unusual name, but I've heard it before. Oh, really? Jimmy Hayes was talking about you only last night. Said you'd whiz past him in your car the other day. Hayes? You were friends in college, you know. He's sort of plump and... Oh, yes, and... That's right. <laughs> oh, my golly, Jimmy Hayes. I didn't know he lived in Hansford. How can I get in touch with him, do you know? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I... Uh, I'm having a few people over to the house Wednesday night, and Jimmy's promised to be there. I'd love to have you if Mother. you can come. Oh, uh, I didn't know you were having a party, Jane. Well, it isn't exactly a party, Mrs. Pierce. It's... Uh... Isn't that a strange coincidence, Laura? What? <laughs> You see, uh, we're having a little gathering of our own on Wednesday night to, uh, to celebrate our anniversary. Our uh, what? Aren't we, dear? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Mr. Tevis will be coming. 
Why, yes, certainly. <laughs> We'd like so much to have you too, Jane. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Pierce. But you'll be busy with your own party. It's too bad. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Oh, here's your car. Open the door for the tools, will this? Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye. I think you'll be able to get the car now, Bill. All right. Oh, Mother, you're wonderful. Wonderful. She's a magician. She changed our anniversary from December to July and pulls a party out of the hat like that. She's marvelous. Well, haven't you ever heard of a surprise party? That's what it will be, a surprise party. A what? Never mind. You'll find out. Hansford and Hampton to be joined by new railway. Construction to be started immediately. Big business boom is anticipated. There you are, Mom. We're off. Isn't it grand? Now the fun begins. Look at it. It's all ours. Why, they'll be fighting to buy these lots. Sammy, do you think that maybe... What are you worrying about, Dad? <laughs> by the time he finds out, we'll have our investment back. I hope so. And he won't kick when the shekels start rolling in. Oh, Sammy. <laughs> Don't gulp, child. Gosh, I gotta hurry. Brady and his men will be there at 10. They're gonna put up a little office shack. Oh. You better not wait dinner for me if I'm late. We may be all day on this thing. But you will get home in time for the party. Oh, gosh, that's right. It is tonight, isn't it? I'll make it. Well, good luck, Mom, and wish me the same. <laughs> Land say. Beg pardon. Are you the girl from the agency? Yes, sir. I've been waiting for you. This way. Okay, doke. I put the shack right over there. Well, what are we waiting for? Okay, boys, hop to it. Put the house about oh, back there, about 20 yards. It's practically done. Well, Brady, congratulate me, and yourself too. Look at it. Today it's just a few acres of neglected land. Tomorrow, history will celebrate the foresight, the enterprise, the commercial genius of a guy named Pierce, who first saw its possibility. And you'll be able to tell your grandchildren you were there when it all started. I sure appreciate it. Now, how about checking over these invoices? Brady, you have no soul. Wait a minute. That's funny. Hey, Brady. Give me a hand with this. What's up? Something fishy down there. This steak drives in too easy. Huh? Give me one of those mallets. Hey, get a load of that. You had this place looked over? No, why should I? Well, it might be a swell idea before you try to build anything on this land. Come on, boys. Come on, get that truck loaded. Pardon me. <coughs> Bobby, who, who are you? Blossom. Oh. Blossom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I guess I'm in the wrong house. Oh, I wouldn't know. I'm a stranger here myself. Hello, Daddy. Oh, do, do we live here? How do you like it, George? Yeah, yeah. What's happened? What's happened? Well, Mother said it would be a surprise party, remember? Mm -hmm. Well, isn't it lovely? Yeah, where did this stuff come from? Who's going to pay for all this? Oh, now, don't get excited, George. It's only rented. Rented? Uh-huh. I got it all from Peyton Brothers in Hampton. Wasn't it a wonderful idea? Oh, Mom. You know, they supply all the movie studios and theaters. Yeah, that's where this stuff belongs. Oh, it isn't costing much. 
The way the place looked before, we just couldn't ask people like Mr. Tevis and his aunt. Oh. She's really coming, Daddy, isn't it, Grand? Oh, smiles. I could hardly wait. Oh. Oh. Surprise! Surprise! Oh. Surprise. Oh. Surprise. <laughs> How are you? I like the new piano, Dad. Rufus, get down off that piano. That's a genuine Louis Quint. Yeah, I believe you. But the man said it was worth $1,200. Oh, I had your tuxedo sponged and pressed. It's all ready to put on. My tuxedo? I will not wear that tuxedo. Cheer up, Dad. That's part of the surprise. Woo! You, uh, you better run up and have your bath now, dear. Yeah. Laura and I will have ours after dinner. Yeah, I just don't kind of day to take a bath. Well, you want me to wear tonight, Mom? Can I wear my Scotch kilty? <laughs> Listen to them, will you? You'll be wearing your pajamas, both of you. What? And tuck safe in your bed. Oh, Mommy. You can't do this to me. Now, Rufus, don't argue. This is a party for grown-ups. Oh, those awful cracks in that ceiling. First time you have a party around here and I'm left out. Now, stop that mumbling, Rufus. But, Mommy... There's nothing to be done about it. Now, go along and wash up for dinner. <coughs> Both of you. Sammy will be here. Oh, soon I expect. He said he might not be home for dinner. Business, you know. Sounds like big business. Oh, yes, indeed. But uh, it's kind of a secret just now. Um, how is your new investment doing, Mrs. Stewart? New investment? Mine? <laughs> you can't fool me. I know all about it. Well, perhaps you'll enlighten me. You see, uh, you're really responsible for my... Oh, well, that's it. Perhaps I'm talking too much. How about little groceries? You mean, uh, refreshments here? Yeah, a little refreshments and a little... <laughs> Pardon me. I'll see how Blossom can be along. Who is it? Who? Blossom! Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I haven't seen you in ten years. You haven't changed a bit. Thank you. Well, just as old then as you do now. I mean, uh, I mean, I hope you're feeling good. Okey-doke. The glasses are in the top shelf of the pantry cupboard. Now hurry. Okey-doke. Just say yes, ma'am. Okey-doke. Here's the blossom. Ooh. I could 
a swole. Land's sake, what did they put in this stuff? <laughs> Sorry about the chair, Mrs. Pierce. Oh, that's nothing, nothing at all. Oh, it don't belong to us. George. <laughs> he will have his little joke. Boy, oh, boy. Shut up. Can we eat the jelly roll first? Everything in its place. Oh, I've passed your house many times, Mrs. Stewart. I think it's lovely. Thank you. I've often wondered how it looked inside. I remember it was the first house in the county to have three baths. George. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. No, thank you. Go on, take some. It's good. No, thank you. Okie doke. How is your plumbing? I beg your pardon. Well, I mean, you know, those uh, L-shaped pipes down underneath the, the, the bathtub there, they were barely soldered. I thought maybe they might. Do you have any leaks at all? I assure you, everything is all right. <laughs> very lucky, very lucky. I'm sure Mrs. Stewart isn't interested in sanitary engineering, dear. I'm sure everybody is. Have you got the old-fashioned tubs yet? The ones that just slide down when you get wet, you can't get up. You try to get up out of the... Your foot just slide away down this. I've got the new tubs there with the corrugated bottom. She said, there like that, you can move around it. Get up. Hey, Doris, listen to this one. He sipped the nectar from her lips. As neath the moon they sat. I wondered if ever a man before had drunk from a mug like that. I don't get it. Hey, how about some more of that stuff? Hey, uh... You can't stay here, Susan. This is a stag. Sure, That's this a is a stag. 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 A what? A party for men only. Not anymore. It isn't not unless you want Mother to know about it. Oh, heck. You know what this is? Mm-hmm. Blackmail. Let's have something to eat. That's a good idea. Oh, Mother, you know I can't sing on a full stomach. Oh, dear, I forgot. Well, you can sing now. We can eat later. Uh, pardon me. Why, everybody, turn off the radio. Now we're going to sing. Come along, Mr. Stewart. Come a little closer. Laura's going to render a little song. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> render, you know what that means, don't you? To tear apart. <laughs> Universal joint in the automobile. 
Oh, you guys have no scientific interest. Just materialists, that's all. You didn't do so bad. Look! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Let me call you my own. Let me make you a part of the song in my heart. Alone, I'm just living in vain. Everything that I do is depending on you. Show me a sign of your longing for me. Say you are mine. dollars saved up in my dime bank. That'll help a little. Oh, it's all right. Eight dollars? Oh, you poor child. Why, the rug alone is worth eight hundred. <laughs> I've been a vain, silly woman, George. But I only did it for my little girl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, it's not your fault or her fault. It's no one's fault but mine. I never took the trouble to see it your way or Laura's. About that ceiling, you know it's all my fault. I knew it was from a leak. I could have fixed that, but I just didn't get around to it. Oh, well. What she's talking about it. Never mind. I'll go tomorrow morning over to the bank and make arrangements for a loan. Oh, George, you're a darling. Listen, Dad, I can get a job in a paper factory. And maybe I can sell baby. Oh. Forget it. Now, your kids come on upstairs and go to bed. <laughs> yes, yeah, darling, go to sleep. Good night. Good night. Good night, darling. Good night, dear. Good night, dear. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mm. Well, well, I think it's about time you you better get some sleep too. All right. Good night, darling. Don't worry about anything, darling. Daddy, I'll get a job at a nightclub. I'll practice three hours every single day. Oh well, we'll talk about that in the morning, dear. Good night, Mother. <laughs> now, now, about that loan, uh, I'll have to go to the bank in the morning and arrange for it, but we'd have to have some collateral, so I guess I'll have to take those bonds. The bonds? Yes. Oh, but you can't have them. Why, what's the matter? What'd you do with them? Uh, I gave them to Sammy. To Sammy? Not for that scheme of his. Yes. How could you do a thing like that? You know what they meant to us. Why, we promised each other. You'll thank me, George. You see, if you don't, you'll thank both of us. Why, in a few weeks, we'll be rich. You wait and see. I... Oh, Sammy. What's happened? What hasn't happened? Sammy, dear, your father knows all about the bonds. Tell him what a wonderful proposition it is. That it's going to make us all rich. He won't listen to me. Tell him. Mom, I... I can't. Sammy, is something wrong? Everything. It's no good. The land's undermined. All of it. Rotten with quicksand. You couldn't even pitch a tent on it. Quicksand? What's that? I've been all this time arguing with old man Hamill to take it back. But it's the same old story. He says it's my hard luck. Offered me $1,500 and that's all. Gee, Dad, I, I'm sorry. I wish there was something I could do. We've done enough already. <laughs> oh, I'll kill myself. That's all I'll do. Kill myself. Oh, Sammy! I give up. <laughs> now, remember, when we get out here to Hamill, I want to do all the talking. Okay, Dad.
<laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, nothing. Who was it that said, live and learn? I don't know, but sometimes I think it's cost more than it's worth. Where is this graveyard of yours? Right around the next turn. Hey, now you two wait right here until Daddy comes back. But Baby wants to take a walk. You promised to behave. I took you along, didn't you? All right, I'll behave. Daddy. Now, look here, Hammer. If I this wanna... son of yours had brought you here to argue with me, Pierce, it's no use. All right, let's start all over again. Good morning. Good morning. I, I told him my price, $1,500. And after looking the place over this morning, I don't know that it's worth that much. Oh. You didn't talk that way when you sold it Keep to me. Well, you, you didn't talk that way when you sold it to him, to me, to, to us. <coughs> oh, look here, Hummel, you can't put over anything like that on my boy. I come around here to get this thing all straightened up. <coughs> oh, you're nothing but a crook. I want my money back, and I want it very quick. You understand? Don't you try to do a thing like that to anyone in my family. I'll take $2,000. $2,000? You're crazy. Well, I can't stand here arguing all day long. You bad job. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you $1,750 and not a penny more. And I'll take it or leave it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Fine. Now we get down to my office and close the deal. Yeah, you get in there with Uncle Scrooge. Go down there and have that deed transferred. Go okay, ahead. Pop. And uh, make that check payable to me. <laughs> Rufus, quick, help me. Dad, Susan, look out. Wait a minute. Don't get hold of the side. Oh, Wait a minute. He'll be right there. Get a hold of the side. Oh, Go on. Grab a hold on the side. Here, get, get. Give me the rope. Give it here. We got to put take, a loop in it. Hurry up. I'll help. Quick. Hurry up. Get down there. Go ahead. Get down there. Hurry up. Make a loop and pull around the shoulder. Hurry up. You'll only go deeper. No, don't, don't move around like that. Now, look. Put this over your shoulder. It's under your arm. Hurry up. Grab that rope and put it over your shoulder. I will. Give me chance. Hurry. All right. Now, come on. Here we go. Oh, pull, Dad, pull. All right, I got it. That's okay. Yeah. Are you all right? Huh? Poor baby. Oh, poor. Did I tell you to stay in the car? Yeah, but baby didn't hear you. Yeah, well, Mama come on. sure will be angry. Yes, I don't feel so good about it myself. Come on, get up, son. Oh, I'm coming. If you'd done as I told you, everything would have been all right. Get in the car. Hey, wait a minute. What is it now? You know what this is? Oh, get in the car. Come on, baby. But, Dad, we can go to Hampton. We gotta stop Sammy. Uh. But, Dad, I tell you, this belongs to a dinosaur. I'll give it back to him. <laughs> Look, Dad, I'm serious. This is only part of the ankle joint. The rest of the bones are bound to be nearby. I've been studying up on this. The only place to ever find those things are in the Dead Sea or out in the desert someplace. Hmm. You call Los Angeles a desert? Yeah, it's been done. <laughs> well, the La Brea pits are right plumb in the middle of it. The what? The La Brea pits. A whole big strip of land they thought was useless for years. Well, then they began to find fossils and things on it. Now it's a whole big park with a museum and everything. Uh, they pull things out of there with a fortune. You don't think that we really got... Gosh, Dad, I wouldn't give you a bum steer. It's all in the books we got at home. We gotta stop Sammy, I tell you. It's impossible. Look, you can get one of the scientists from over at the Institute. They'll tell you. Well, all right. What on earth are you doing, Daddy? Well, I'll make it a fool of myself, I guess. Don't worry, Dad. We'll catch him. Yeah. Step well, on it. All right. I'll stop. There we go. Woo! <laughs> Did they say they pay for those soup bones? Thousands of dollars, boy. Woo, some soup. <laughs> but they wouldn't pay that much money for my bones. Get the notary over here, Miss Jessup. Yes, Mr. Hamill. Let me have that deed, young fellow. Draw up a transfer of this property to me and make out a check for $1,750 payable to George Pierce. 
Step on it. Huh? This thing's practically crawling. What are you talking about? If we go any faster, this jalopy will fall apart. Yeah. I hope you're right about this thing, that's all. And don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You stay here, Susan. Okie doke. Right here, young man. Oh! What's going on? The deal's off. Are you crazy? I don't know. What's happened? Oh, you'll find out. Wait a minute. This pen costs five dollars. Take it back. They gypped you. <laughs> Well, Step on it, Dad. The Institute said they'd have a man out there at 2 o'clock. Ah, uh, take it easy. We've got plenty of time. Isn't it wonderful, George? A dinosaur on our property. Whoo! <laughs> I told you we'd be late. Wonder if he's found anything yet. Hello, Harold. That's Harold Wayner. Wayner? Mother. Hello, Laura. This is a surprise. How are you? Me? Well, I'm all right. Are you really interested, Mr. Wayner? <laughs> I'm Laura's mother. How do you do? And this is her father. So you're Wayner, huh? Well, I believe so, or am I wrong, Sammy? You're Wayner, all right. Well, then that's settled. Well, how are you, Laura? I didn't know that you were... I'm not interested in any excuses or apologies, Mr. Wayner. Please don't talk to me. Well, let's settle. The question is, have you found anything? Uh, well, well? Well, this uh, specimen I've dug up is hardly enough to tell me very much. Well, this help. This is one we found this morning. Oh, yes, that's better. Well, I should say this bone is the foreleg connecting with the ankle joint. What did I tell you? Of course, it's difficult to state its exact age, but apparently some poor animal went exploring a few years back and wandered into harm's way. Most likely, somebody's uh, cow. A cow? Ooh, that almost happened to baby. This is a terrible blow to me. Yes, you'll get a terrible blow. Oh, no, no, oh, no, Daddy, Pop, Daddy, Pop, Daddy, let him alone. We all make mistakes. Uh, you ought to know. He couldn't help it, Daddy. I gotta take a sock at somebody. I won't feel right. Don't stop that. Oh, go ahead and let him sock me and get it over yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, I'm even deprived of that pleasure. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, well. Right, Say, just a moment. If you're trying to talk to me, Mr. Wayner. I'm not, Miss Pierce. If that relieves your mind any. Listen, don't talk to my daughter that way. Now, look here, Mr. Pierce. I didn't come out here to be insulted by you and half of your family. This is my whole family. Well, the cheek of some people. First you make an appointment with my child, and then without even so much as a telephone call, you simply decide to forget it, and now you'll be injured party. I'm not aware of having broken any appointments with Miss Pierce. But unless I can be reasonably sure that the door won't be slammed in my face, I don't intend to keep the one we have for tonight. Tonight? Well, didn't we say Thursday? Well, y yes, but, but I thought you meant last Thursday. How could I? That was the night of the Dean's dinner for the osteology group. And we left for the science convention the next day. Well, you did say something about going out of town, but I... Yes, and I asked to see you the first evening I knew I'd be back. Oh, oh, I must have misunderstood you. I'm terribly sorry, Harold. Well, then I take it for granted, Laura, that everything assumes its uh, uh, status quo. Oh, what? He means he'll be there for you tonight. Oh, yes, yes. At oh. 6.30? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, I never. Well, we better bid you good afternoon. <laughs> oh, just a moment. Oh, I forgot. I want no, to no, you. this sand is very interesting. You know, it's a variety usually found only in Massachusetts. Yeah, well, I should have kept it there. How much did you pay for this property, Mr. Pierce? Well, you have to ask the genius how much. Uh, $4,800. Yeah. Oh. Well, I thought you had several acres. We have. Four and a half acres. And you've had it looked over? There's hardly a square yard that isn't full of that stuff. Oh, well. You've made a very shrewd purchase. Well, you don't have to rub it in, you know. Now, you see, this sand is very rich in silicates. It's in great demand for the manufacture of fine glass. You see, with the deposit of average depth, this property ought to be worth four or, well, maybe $5,000 an acre. Mm. At least that's what some of the eastern tracks bring. You, you haven't been drinking, have you? <laughs> Mr. Pierce, I'm a teetotaler. Well, here's where you fall off the wagon. Get in there. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> 
a good thing I'm interested in science. If it hadn't been for me... Is that so? Didn't Baby find the bone? <laughs> Listen to her, will you? Who bought the land? Answer me that. Oh, oh Mr. Pierce. Well, I, of uh, all things, who gave you the money? Of oh, course, we'd be crazy to sell. The thing to do is to build our own glass factory. Cut out the middleman. Double the profits. Why, Ooh. it's terrific. <laughs> okay, Dad, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, Mr. Pierce. Yeah. Is anything uh, wrong, Harold? Well, it's just that I left my coat and car behind. Oh, that's all right. No one will take them. Oh, I saw the loveliest green car, McNeil's green car. Green car, never mind. 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 Green car,